Hello fellas, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited to share with you guys a new tutorial on body mechanics. And I will take you through 5 simple steps from getting reference, blocking out the key poses, adding in-betweens, balancing the hips, and spline curve attitude adjustment. This shows the character from standing, running, jump over the box, and landing on the ground, following a video sequence. This is a very interesting tutorial for beginners to learn how to animate according to reference. And before we start this tutorial, we will first go to YouTube and look for this reference named Athlete Male Vault Reference. And there are two versions of it, one with 3 seconds and another one with 13 seconds. And use the short ones and you can refer to this video up here that shows you how to prepare the reference and import it into Maya as a background animated sequence for us to refer later. And now, once you have that reference setup done, you can start by giving him a simple standing relax pose by tweaking so. Hold shift key to add selection to select those fingers and bend them to make sure the palm looks more relaxed and loose. Now once you're done tweaking on one side of it, apply the similar thing to the other hand. And again, hold shift key to add selection to select the three segments in a row, then rotate together to bend the fingers. And next, let's lower down the arm by pulling that hand icon with red and green color that how a normal human standing. And the icon with four different directions is the controller to control the direction of where the elbow is facing. So, you spend a bit of time to pose him nicely. And you shouldn't drag it towards the different direction, it will seem like breaking the joint. We do not want to break him. Next, we have to create a quick select set, so that it will make us set key for the whole pose easier. You can turn on the outliner by hold down spacebar and left click and drag down to the bottom to turn on the outliner and click on show to display shapes that will allow us to select all the controllers we seen in the viewport. And then you can hold shift key and select these controllers one by one until you finish selecting all the controllers from the scene. And if you are wondering how I got the tab name mine on the shelf, it is because I created a new one from the gear setting small I tiny icons on the left side, so that you can have your own tab and then later add whatever important shortcuts that you need to use in this tab of your own. After you have done with selecting all those controllers, you go to create tab at the top, then go to sets, and you see quick select set on the third option. Click on that one. Then it will show you a new menu, asking you to give it a name. So let's just type Bonnie, without space, without underscore, because it just doesn't accept any other special characters, except plain text, and then you can click Add to Shelf. You will see a small icon named Bonnie appear right there into your shelf. Next, let's set the key poses on contact points of the legs on the reference picture itself to draft out the overall action what he's gonna do. When setting animations, we should not go straight into details with in-betweens and etc. We should approach it with the pose to pose action way by first nailing down the most important pose that laid out the main story. 
The first contact point of the heel on the right leg falls on frame 19. Then press S to set a key for that. The next one is on the 28th, where the left leg is touching the ground and continue with 32 that both arms touching the boxes. Then we'll have 35, the legs gets off the ground, 40, character is right in the middle, 46, a position where he is in the mid position before landing the ground. 51 with toe contact point, and then we move on to 52, heel contact point, and setting a few more towards the end where he has this little jump again, before he's standing still on the ground. So, I have placed 55, 60, 61, 63, 65, 70, 74, and 79 in the way that I think those might be needed to get the first draft looks better, or we could call it the blocking pass. And we need to set a key on the first frame as well. Then we can have a quick check on all of the key poses on the picture by clicking this small play button with a tiny orange line on the right. That it will choose the next key to go to, which I mean by the red lines that shows on the timeline, to see how it looks in overall and whether we missed out anything. I think it is looking good, so we are ready to move to the next tab. Next, we can start posing Bonnie according to those key poses that we set earlier on the picture reference. First, we have the lower Bonnie down a little bit so that we can have room to push our right leg out that follows the reference. the heel stays there and use the heel ball function to rotate so that the toe face diagonally up following the reference. Adjust the back leg with the heel ball function to lift up the heel as he is about to move forward and rotate the middle round circle to have him leaning forward as well. And the head has to be rotated up so that this guy is looking front to the box direction because he will be running towards it. And then, move the arms behind so that he anticipates the action before moving the arms front later to touch the box. and I'm tweaking the 4 arrow icon behind the elbow to pose the arms better. Then we have to use the quick select button that we have just created just now, remember? The icon with the Bonnie text on the shelf. Click to select all of the controllers on Bonnie and press S to set the key for the whole pose. And then we can continue to adjust the other pose that follows the reference. And when you finish each time of a single pose that you have adjust, have to remember to click the quick select button and press S to set a key so that everything will be lined up properly and accurately.
Now that I have came to the third pose which falls on 28th frame, where his hands is about to reach the white box that is barely visible. We have to move the arms in front, and pose him kind of similar to follow closely how the athlete pose at the back. Adjust the fingers so that it seems he is holding on to those boxes. In our actual scene, we are missing those boxes. We need to create those boxes in order for us to proceed with the animation. What am I gonna do? I never learned about modeling! Well, trust me, it is very easy! You hold down space bar to show the hotbox menu, and you go to create, polygon primitives, and choose a cube. Then you will see a cube pop up into your viewport. Then you can hover your mouse over, then drag over to the vertex and click on it. Then you will see those purple dots appear on the box. You can then select those dots and move them to resize it to the way you want it. And hold right click then choose object mode to exit from the vertex mode once you've finished adjust those sizes. And with the box still selected, you can click Ctrl D with your keyboard to duplicate a new copy and move using the W move tool.
is looking a lot better now, and the overall actions are clear on what this character is trying to do. Running, jumping, landing are all good. And once we finish all those key poses, it is time to add in some in-betweens. It seems like in between frame 1 and frame number 19, we can add one more pose at frame 11 to have him transition better from standing pose to anticipate a step forward that falls on the 19th. We add another adjustment pose on the arms at frame 15 so that the arms doesn't feel push or drag over the front because I want it to look more like a rotate. And after that, we add another key at 23rd to lower down the arms and you can also adjust the leg to follow better how the athlete pose at the back on the picture. It is good to scroll through a few times after setting some keys to preview and make sure everything falls on the right track. And after that, you can continue to add in more in-betweens where you feel it is necessary. Once you're done adding the in-between pose keys, you can now proceed to the spline adjustment which is in the graph editor part. Go to Windows tab and choose Animation Editors and go to Graph Editors to open it up. In this process, we will identify any potential unsmooth points along the curve. Is there any sudden spike or drop that causes the animation to be jagged? We can try to move those points and see what it did to our character in the viewport. You can then move down or up the points or even remove some of the extra points you think it is not necessary as long as it helps to make the animation better. It is a good move. So I'm checking through the root controller on the waist, position of X, Y and Z and also the rotation of X, Y and Z as well. Start adding the hips rotation according to the legs and body movements to have a better balance of the pose. When the right leg is heading out, 
the hips should tweak towards the direction and vice versa. Scroll through the timeline and see which part needs tweaking and adjust whatever it's necessary whether it's the chest, the spine, the neck, the head, the arms, legs and etc. So, here it is, we have got a nice looking animation. We start blocking out the key poses, then we add in the in-betweens, and after that, looking into spline adjustment in the graph editor. Even though we haven't looked into the fine details about the animation adjustment, instant, ist out, secondary action, overlapping actions, follow through actions, I will say it looks quite good as the base and I hope this is good enough for beginners to understand the whole concept on how to animate by different stages of process and it benefits in your journey while learning 3D animation. And please leave the comment down below if you have any question. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button to ring it so that you don't miss any new content in the future. Until then, I will see you next time. Bye-bye and Happy New Year 2021.